So many thanks, Henrik, for this excellent overview of the uh, Alzheimer and uh, an amyloid fields being educational. So my, my name is Johan Sandin, and I'm a CSO at AltSecure, and I'm going to talk about Alstatin, which is our small molecule disease modifying therapy against Alzheimer's disease. Now, the Alstatin program emanates uh, from Big Pharma AstraZeneca, where we were part of um, the conception of the project at the time. And there's a substantial investment uh, that was already made into the program when we uh, took this program over. Um, the target here is the gamma secretase, as we heard uh, Henrik talk about earlier on, which is certainly a key enzyme producing A beta. And you also heard about this, this strong genetic linkage to disease, where the majority of all familiar mutations are actually linked to the gamma secretase complex causing an early onset of disease. We have two drug candidates, ACD679 and ACD680, which are both in preclinical development phase, so in currently conducting the safety and toxicology packages before moving into clinical studies. Uh, both compounds potently reduce A beta 42 production um, and, and, and do instead produce these shorter peptides, uh, which are um, not prone to, to aggregation. And there are also suggested beneficial effects of these, as, as we heard Henrik mention earlier on. Now, this slide's just showing you the kind of classical amyloid cascade, if you will, um, starting with the, with the cleavage and the formation of uh, A-beta monomers, which over time, with the increasing concentration, starts to accumulate into larger and larger, larger aggregates, such as oligomers, protofibrils, fibrils, and eventually these amyloid plaques, which are so characteristic of the disease. Now, with Alstatin, with the gamma secretase modulator, we're actually targeting the production of the building block of these various amyloid aggregates to prevent uh, the buildup of, of various toxic aggregates, such as oligomeres and, and fibrils. Um, and uh, so this is, is really targeting the key initiation, if you will, uh, of the amyloid cascade. Now, if you look at the right-hand side of the slide, this, this shows the actual cleavage that uh, Henrik showed on his previous slide as well, um, how A-beta is cleaved out of the amyloid precursor protein, which is uh, a sequential cleavage by first the beta secretase and then uh, by the gamma secretase, releasing uh, A-beta of various lengths uh, the um, aggregation prone and toxic A beta 42 uh, forming the core of the amyloid aggregates. Um, the gamma secretase modulator, like Alstatin, they will uh, target the gamma secretase and modulate um, the cleavage pattern. So instead of forming these longer forms, the 40 42 amino acid long A beta peptides, instead forming uh, increased amounts of the shorter fragments, the 37 and 38 amino acid long peptides. So what it essentially does is change the ratio between the long aggregation prone and toxic forms towards the shorter um, uh, forms, which actually have shown to have also added beneficial effects. So indeed, what it does is actually the reverse of what many familiar mutations do. Now, if we look at the left-hand side, you see the gamma secretase complex, which actually consists of four different subunits. You have the presinolin, the PEN2, the nicastrin, and the APH1. And uh, here we can also see the uh, interaction sites uh, that various drugs bind to. You have the gamma secretase inhibitors, which bind to the active site and blocks uh, um, the, the um, activity of the enzyme. And then you have also allosteric sites, which again modulate the enzyme's activity more uh, specifically. And with Alstatin, we bind to the classical imidazole gamma secretase modulator allosteric site. Now, just to reiterate, uh, obviously the A beta 42 peptide being and forming. Uh, the kind of core of these amyloid aggregates being a uh, really aggregation prone peptide. The gamma secretase modulators reduce the A beta 42 and 40 and shift this towards shorter forms of A beta, the 37 and 38 amino acid long peptides, 
which are not prone to aggregation and, as uh, we heard earlier, also uh, can exhibit protective properties. Now, the alstatin compounds have been tested in vivo in animals, and we've been able to show um, even after a single dose that we get potent and dose-dependent reduction of the amount of toxic membrane A beta 42, as you can see here, with more than 60% reduction. Um, it also behaves as a classical gamma secretase modulator. It reduces the amount of the irrigation prone A beta 42 and 40, shown here in black and blue. And at the same time, it increases the amount of the protective 38 and 37 species. And in fact, if you look at the total amount of A beta, it doesn't change. So it, it just changes the ratio. It also has the benefit if A beta does have a physiological role in the brain, it's less likely to affect that, given that we're not affecting the total amount of A beta, but just changing the ratios. And I think this, as, as um, Henry pointed out earlier on, it's really important to notice the difference between the gamma secretase inhibitors and the modulators because it's, it's really a different mechanism of action. And um, as Henrik showed earlier on, the gamma secretase inhibitors were really the first on the stage. Uh, the intent here was obviously to block enzyme activity and then block uh, the production of A-beta. Now, it's since been known that gamma secretase has some 100 different substrates, some of which, like Notch, plays a really important function in normal cell function. So uh, in, in inhibiting that um, cleavage is obviously of, of major importance. So um, the clinical study showed uh, major side effects with inhibiting the enzyme. So this was not a, a really good strategy forward. The next thing that the industry went for was base inhibition, we also heard there. Um, base also has multiple different substrates, so again, inhibiting the enzyme will also affect the, the uh, metabolism of, of these other uh, substrates. So inhibition was clearly not the best way forward, and therefore this idea about modulation came about where the idea was to rather specifically try to modulate how the enzyme cleaves specifically A beta um, and not inhibiting um, other gamma secretase related substrates such as NOTCH. And here um, you can see to the down to the right that our compounds do not touch other gamma secretase substrates such as NOTCH, but it's specific for A beta. So it's clearly a much safer mechanism of action than uh, an inhibitor. Uh, we also did a collaboration with uh, Washington University uh, looking specifically at um, um, the effect of uh, alstatin compounds in the brain of um, uh, in an established mouse AD model. And here you can see that the compound induces a rapid and, and long-term uh, decrease of A-beta 40, 42, here shown in blue, um, with about 80% reduction shown here, and over quite su a substantial time after a single dose. And uh, at the same time as shown here to the graph to the right, you can see that it increases the shorter fragments, the A-beta 37 peptide. Uh, we also did conduct uh, Two photon microscopy study uh, where you're able to actually monitor the appearance and growth of uh, amyloid aggregates such as plaques in the living tissue in the brain of, of uh, living animals. And this is also a mouse AD model called APPPS1. And here we saw that uh, one month treatment with a gamma secretase modulator, uh, it attenuated further plaque growth and actually decreased um, the appearance of new plaques and uh, also induced a plaque regression. And this is coming back to what Henrik mentioned earlier on uh, with potential beneficial effects of these shorter A-beta peptides that are produced after gamma secretase modulation. There are uh, both clinical data showing that uh, patients or populations with higher A-beta 38 levels have a 
seem to have a slower conversion into AD and also have a slower decline in MMSC scores. Uh, you have another paper also uh, with Henrik as, as part of the uh, part of the team behind the, the publication, showing that indeed these shorter peptides do seem to inhibit the aggregation of A beta 42, as Henrik mentioned earlier on, and also seems to have effects on uh, important cellular processes such as long term potentiation, where again A beta 38 reverses the kind of toxic effects of A beta 42. So clearly indicating that these shorter fragments do seem to have some neuroprotective properties and beneficial effects. So again, coming back to how does then alstatin differ from the antibodies? What, what are the, what do we see as advantages? Well, this being a small molecule therapy, it passes much more readily across the blood brain barrier to reach its target site, the brain, than uh, larger molecules such, such antibodies. It also provides a more cost-effective treatment for chronic use than, than biologics do. And it's also suitable, as we heard from Henrik, as a standalone treatment, but also as a combination therapy uh, together with anti-amyloid antibodies. And it's also uh, something that you could take as a pill, uh, as an oral formulation, which allows for home treatment. So you don't need to come into the hospital uh, once or twice a month for infusions. So that's also helpful for this patient population. And we're not expecting to see this kind of um, side effects, the area effects that we heard Henrik mentioned earlier on um, with, with this kind of, uh, with this class of drugs. Another uh, stronghold and a strong value driver for the program is that you can establish proof of mechanism and central target engagement already in phase one. So besides looking at safety and tolerability after single and repeated administration, we can also explore the effects on biomarkers, as we heard Henrik mention earlier on, A beta 42, 40, uh, to show that we can reduce these A beta species, and at the same time we can show an increase of the shorter A beta 37 and 38 peptides. Um, this is a biomarker strategy we've seen previously employed by Pfizer, but also by uh, recently by Roche, and measurements can be done with existing technologies. And again, as I mentioned, we're not expecting to see uh, the same area side effects as seen with the antibodies. So with regard to the different target populations, and I think this is also something that Henrik talked about, uh, we see this as, um, it could be used as a maintenance therapy in patients with established Alzheimer's disease. So a treatment that you would start with after you've cleared existing plaques uh, with a monoclonal antibody treatment, so to prevent new buildup of amyloid aggregates in the brain, uh, which was actually the original intent by Lilly uh, with their base inhibitor. Uh, you could also ex um, imagine this as a combination therapy together with monoclonal antibody treatment to both uh, prevent uh, new amyloid uh, from forming and at the same time clearing existing amyloids, so getting a a very rapid effect. And as we heard from, from um, Henrik also, in the long term, I think this is, is obviously really interesting as a potential preventive therapy as well, based on genetic risk factors and biomarkers. And here you could imagine doing a study, for example, in familiar forms of disease to, um, to look at its potential preventive effects uh, as a long-term uh, possibility. But as a first step, we will be looking at the maintenance or combination therapies. And obviously, as we heard from Henrik earlier as well, there are well-established biomarkers in the field, and it's, it's currently evolving at a very rapid pace, uh, and it's so much exciting data coming out, where obviously um, uh, Henrik has been really in the forefront of this, and it's, it's really exciting to see. Uh, so it's, um, it's, it's certainly, I think, uh, important for the whole field and, and certainly for us as a, as a drug development company as well. So to summarize uh, with Alstatin, um, the gamma secretase modulators in the statin program decreases A beta 42 production, which also will then reduce uh, the production of various amyloid aggregates, such as oligomerous fibrils, as well as plaques. 
It increases these shorter peptides, A beta 37 and 38, which are suggested to have uh, beneficial properties. Uh, we do not block enzyme activity as the inhibitors do, so we thereby spare important physiological signaling, which is certainly key for, for safety. It's also a genetically supported mechanism. It's, it is the, its mode of action is the reverse of most familiar forms of, of Alzheimer's disease. It's also a small molecule compound, so it allows for oral administration, good CNS exposure, and we can achieve proof of mechanism data already in phase one clinical trials, which is an important value driver for the program and could be used together with other disease modifying therapies such as antibodies. And it's also got the potential to prevent or slow disease progression as we heard Henrik mention earlier. So I think this is a really interesting, um, really interesting program, a really interesting uh, mechanism of action as we heard Henrik mention earlier as well. So with that, I thank you for uh, for your attention and let